<clears throat> hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mac, playfastfootball.blogspot.com. We are uh, on Thursday after the hurricane week. School's been canceled all week. Uh, games have been canceled for this week. Some people are going to play Monday. Uh, some people we are going to play on our bye week. We have the uh, same bye week as an opponent. So uh, we're able to get back to practice tomorrow. So, uh, you know, we're excited to get back to a little bit of normalcy there. Uh, our area in the uh, Jacksonville area, there was a lot of flooding, a lot of real bad flooding. Uh, there's still some people without power, about 48, 45 percent of the county is still without power. There's seven to ten schools that still don't have power. So, uh, you know, hopefully we're trying to get back to some normalcy here and, and get back to doing the things that we love to do with everybody being safe and sound. And, and uh, obviously there's some more important things in football, but once you take care of, of, you know, your house and your well-being and you make sure that everybody's safe and sound, you want to kind of return to doing the things that, that you love to do and that take your mind off of some other things. So hopefully we can get back um, and start practicing tomorrow. Uh, we won't play again until probably next Friday or Saturday, so we're going to have at least uh, four or five practices. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to add on to the, uh, the video that we just did last week about coaching guys get better. Uh, understanding where you're at with your program and what you're trying to do and, and controlling the things that you can control. So we talked last week about, about some of the things that we struggle with. And again, in having some downtime to evaluate film, one of the things I look at is at every position on the field, our guys don't understand how to play with their hands and we play with poor pad level. So everybody on your football team at some point or another, with the exception of maybe your quarterback, at some point or another, everybody on your football team is either going to have to block somebody or they're going to have to take on a block. Your running backs are going to have to block people. Your running backs play on kickoff coverage team. They play on punt protection team. They play on kick return. At some point, they are going to have to physically shoot hands and block people, right? Elbows in, thumbs up, shoot your hands, not play with your chest, not play with your forearms in tight. Your defensive linemen have to be able to strike people. Your offensive linemen have to be able to strike people. Now with the new rules with crackbacks, obviously your receivers, even if they were going to be blocking the perimeter or crackbacking, they have to understand how to shoot hands first and you can no longer you know, throw shoulders or throw bodies into crackback blocks. Um, your safeties that are in the box or at some point your free safety playing quarters coverage, they're going to have to take blockers on. Your corners are going to have to take blockers on. So one of the things we looked at that, that I studied specifically was the fact that we do not shoot our hands, we do not bench press, we do not strike, and we play with a very poor pad level. So one of the things we talked about in the last video was we were, last week we spent 10 minutes every day on, on a lev sled, and a leverage sled is, is made so that it has to be benched in, and then it goes up, and it teaches the proper mechanics of how to bench press and how to shoot and strike violently in and away from your body, and then leverage to go up so that you need proper pad level, all right, you can't leverage a sled to go up if you are on top of the sled pushing down. So if you have a high pad level and you stand up out of your stance or you're a running back that plays with a high pad level, you're never going to get a leverage sled to go in and up if you are constantly high pads on top of the sled. So in order to get the sled to go in and up, you have to get in some type of football position where the sled goes in first and then it goes up. So we talked about that on the last video. Well today I'm going to go by position by position what I am going to try and do with each of our position coaches and each of our players at some point in the practice plan, I'm going to show you how you can maximize your drills by taking some things that you have to do within your offense and your defense and combining them with the simplicity of using a lev sled or, or a, you know, a, a device that is created to strike, shoot, bench press, elbows in, thumbs up, and then also play with a pad level so that you can get a pad to go up. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is our O-line and our sniffers. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to put them on a two-man sled from a short pull position. All right, and I'm going to have our O-linemen and our sniffers short pull to use what our O-linemen would have to use on a kick-out block, on a counter play, and our sniffers would have to use in our zone kick theory. All right, we're going to try and get them to where they have to short pull into a sled. It obviously won't be a long run, but we're going to get them to short pull into a lev sled so that when they short pull and they attack that lev sled, now they have to short pull, punch, and get that lev sled to go in and up with proper pad level, elbows in, and a good strike. All right, so we're going to put O-line and sniffers 
on a short pull track and I'm going to make sure that I keep a pad or something down that makes sure they understand when we enter, we're going to enter into the line of scrimmage. We are not going to short pull flat because we're going to get wrong arm. All right, so we're going to try and make sure that we short pull entering into the line of scrimmage on the two-man sled, and we're going to try and get to short pull, bench press, punch, separate, get that pad to go in and up, all right, so that we understand how to bring our feet, our hips, play with the pad level, shoot our hands, elbows in, thumbs up, and physically strike. So we're going to get our O-lineman and our sniffers on that. Obviously, you can also get your O-lineman, all right, on a two-man sled here, all right, so if you've got your two-man sled working here. You can put boards down for your O-lineman, and now you can get your lineman to work on getting that second foot in the ground, all right? So you can start your O-lineman on one side of the board, all right? And then you can do it on a whistle. It could be full speed. You could bird dog it to be whistle by whistle. But what you want to get them to do is you want to get them to zone step. So they take that first step across the board, four to six inches. Then you want to get them to punch when that second step gets into the ground going through the crotch of that two-man sled, all right? So you won't be able to see my feet on the video, but what it would look like is on a two-man sled, all right, if the board was a two-man sled, on the first whistle, they'll take their zone step, and they'll get those hands back ready to go, and on the second whistle, they'll take the second step up through to get ready to punch, because the second step as an offensive lineman is that most important step. You can't step sideways and punch and expect to move people off the ball. you got to be able to step, step, punch, all right, and on that second punch, second step, I'm sorry, you got to be able to punch so you can get moving. So it's got to be step, step going through the crotch. That second step in a zone scheme, base block, drive block, that second step needs to get through the crotch of the defender to be moving. You cannot take a zone step and punch laterally and expect to get any movement off the ball. All right, so we are going to do the short pull drill, and then I'm also going to get my O line coach to put them on boards on the two man sled and get them to base drive, use technique position step to their gap or their assignment, all right, uh, you know, if they had an outside shade that they have to step to and then get the next step to go through the crotch, okay? So that's what we're going to do with our O-line and our sniffers, all right? We're going to take our running backs and our slots, and what we're going to do is we're going to put them, all right, on the two-man sled, all right? So I'm going to put a running back on the two-man sled right there. I'm going to put a quarterback over to the side of it, okay? And then I'm going to put a cone about four to five yards outside of that, and another cone about four to five yards up, all right, a little bit outside of that and up the field. And what we're going to do with our running backs and our slots is we are going to have them punch the two-man lev sled. So we're going to have them physically right in front. They are going to punch the two-man lev sled so it has to go in and up, all right? So they're going to punch, get that sled in and up with their feet moving. When I blow the whistle, they're going to disengage from the sled, and they're now going to come across in an, uh, a bash concept, a power read concept, an inverted veer concept. So we're also going to get our quarterback some work to where the running back or the slot is going to punch, engage the lead sled so that we are working on physically punching and getting the lead sled up with proper pad level. And then when we get off that, we're going to turn it into an inverted veer, power read type throw where the running back is full speed meshing with the quarterback. All right. And now the running back, regardless of whether he gets the ball or not, We'll put a coach over here to be the read so that the quarterback can get a good read. So now what we'll do is we'll go from the two-man left sled drill to an inverted power read, inverted veer power read drill so now the quarterback can get some work. And we'll take that running back or slot across, and now we'll read to see if this coach dives inside for the give or if this coach stays wide for the keep. And we'll tell that running back that he must sprint regardless of whether he has the ball. He must sprint around the first cone and up and around the second cone so we that we get full speed effort and we teach them that whether you have the ball or not, when we're running that type of play, your track is around and up to make sure. The reason we put this cone out here is when you're running an inverted veer power read scheme and you are not blocking an end, you don't want this back to turn up the field too quickly because that end can make a play. So you want the back to know that his path has to be at least four to five yards wide of that before he ever thinks about turning up the field. And then we'll put a second cone so that we get some type of burst finish. So now we can get our running backs and our slots incorporated in drill, and we can get our quarterbacks doing inverted veer, power read, counter read, anything that you might run where it is jet sweep action or running back outside action with the quarterback making some type of read. Now we've got the quarterback all right, in there, and we've got the quarterback meshing, and, and we're using the quarterback in the drill even though he's not on the two-man left sled. Okay? And we're going to take our wide outs, and very similar to what we do with the running backs, we're going to put the, the wide outs on the left sled, so that they can get the left sled punched in and up with 
proper punch elbows in, proper hip movement, proper feet movement, and proper pad level to get that punched in and up. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a stand-up dummy to the side of it, okay, and, you know, it would look something like the wide receiver would be, let's say the wide receiver would be here, all right, and he will punch the two-man sled, and then when he disengages, I'm going to have, all right, when he disengages from that, I'm going to have a stand-up dummy, sand-filled at the bottom, all right, stand-up, pop-up dummy, and when a wide receiver disengages, he will now make a press release on the stand-up dummy, all right, so whether it's an inside-out, double move, all right, we'll work slants and fades, and then what we'll do is we'll have a quarterback somewhere down here throwing the ball, so this wide receiver will disengage from the two-man sled, and then he will double move the stand-up dummy, all right, so if we were working fade, he would make an outside move first, then he would make an inside move on the stand-up dummy, release back to the outside, stack the dummy, and now we would have the quarterback throw the fade ball. So again, all right, if I would, I would get off, I would take the two-man sled as a receiver, and I would press in and up on the two-man sled. When the whistle blows, I will disengage, and I will go to some type of pop-up dummy. And on that pop-up dummy, I'm now going to make a double move. So if it's fade, I'm going to make an out-in move to come back to the fade, clear, slap short swim, or slap rip, and cut back, all right, into a fade route. Or I will disengage into an inside move for a slant ball, so there'll be a quarterback on the inside. I'll come off the two-man left sled, I'll come to the pop-up dummy, and I'll now go inside, outside, come back, stack, run a slant route, and have the quarterback throw me a ball. So now we got our receivers on the two-man left sled into a double move off a of press, and, and you can even put a coach, if you have those fancy pads that coaches can put on their arms, you can put your receiver coach out there with two hands up, and now the receiver's got to come off the two-man sled, get into the receiver coach, make an inside-outside move, and then come back with whatever he's doing with his hands, stack it on top, win on top, and run the fade or run the slant route, and you can have your quarterback throwing balls, so now that you're getting work, all right, with, uh, with your wide receiver and your quarterback. Okay, so now your wide receivers are on the left sled. They're learning how to strike. They're learning how to play with their hands. They're learning proper leverage and pad level because we need them to block the perimeter as well in our screen game and our outside run game. All right, then we're going to take our D-line, and the thing we struggle with on our D-line is block wreck, block destruction. So we're going to make this an O-line D-line drill. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an O-lineman here, and we're going to put a D-lineman in a shade here, and the two-man sled will be somewhere inside here. Okay, and it won't be very far away. And what we're going to do is we're going to work a three-way go drill where this offensive lineman, he can reach, all right, he can down block, or he can pass set, all right. And what we'll do is we'll also put a player with a bag in here for the down block, all right. So here's what we're going to work on. It's going to get our O lineman to work some of the things that we need to work, but it's going to be a drill for our D lineman to recognize how to strike, how to block wreck, how to block the struck, all right. So. If we get the reach block from the offensive lineman, obviously the O-lineman is working his technique on the reach, and now I need my D-lineman to play in a gap. I need him to strike and play half a man and steer, all right? Steer that long arm, short arm, so that reach now, I gotta get that outside hand in my gap, I gotta get that to the far armpit shoulder pad, that inside hand's gotta go through the V of the neck, and I have to steer that reach block back inside and I got to win steering that back inside being able to peak my helmet in my gap okay so now the O-lineman works the reach I work to beat the reach okay then if we work a down block the one thing we struggle with is when we get down blocks we have a tendency to run up the field and that's not what we want to do we want to squeeze a down block alright and then we want to look inside to see if there's any pullers coming so what we'll do is we'll have our O-lineman work a down block against another lineman with a bag so that when they down block they're physically working the down block and now my D-lineman has to recognize the down block, and then we're going to have him go trap the two-man sled. So now he will go wrong arm, all right, with his helmet inside the two-man sled. But he's not going to physically wrong arm it with a shoulder because it's a two-man sled. What we're going to do is we're going to make him squeeze the down block, run a couple steps to the two-man sled, and strike that two-man left sled to go in and up with his helmet on the inside of it so he understands helmet placement on a wrong arm. All right, so he's not physically going to wrong arm the two-man sled. We're going to have him squeeze the down block, look inside, get flat to the two-man sled, and strike the two-man sled in and up with his helmet on the inside so that we can teach him where your helmet belongs on a wrong arm and what we need to do on a wrong arm. So now we have an O-lineman working a down block. We have a D-lineman squeezing a down block and then running all right, to wrong arm 
punch the left sled, okay? And it's not going to be the exact technique that you would use on a wrong arm, but we're going to combine the technique to say, hey, we're going to go in there and we're also going to try and take this on with our helmet in the right position, but we're also going to try and have that D-line and make a play by disengaging, shooting, striking, and being able to make a play. We're not just going to go in there in the wrong arm and cause a train wreck where that defensive end is out of the play. We're not going to give up hat for hat. We want our defensive end to get thick, wrong arm, but still be able to make a play, so we're going to use the two-man sled for that. And then we could also, all right, get our O-lineman working pass set, get our D-lineman working pass rush, and now as we come off that ball, our D lineman right now, we have a hard time versus pass sets. We think you just rush straight down at the, you know, up the field. As soon as you get a pass set, first thing you got to figure out is what you're doing with his hands and your hands. All right, so what am I doing with his hands? Am I working his hands up for a bull rush? Am I trying to split his hands and come back with my move? Am I trying to jump, all right, and cut and get my hips cleared and cut, pull, rip? What am I trying to do within my pass rush game? All right, what, what things am I doing within my pass rush game? And now this O-line needs to work on his pass set. All right, so now it becomes a one-on-one -on -one pass rush drill. So it's a three-way go with a reach block, a down block, and a pass block. I got O-lineman working, I got D-lineman working. All right, and off that down block, we are going to squeeze that thing and come hit that two-man sled and get that sled to go in and up so we teach proper strike, proper pad level, proper leverage, all right, when taking on blocks. Okay, so that's what we're going to do with our D-line, all right. And then my linebackers, one of the things we're having a little bit of an issue with is what are our keys, where do we fit, where do we belong? All right, so you got the two-man sled sitting right here. I'm going to take my linebackers right in between the two-man sled, and I'm going to put another player behind them that is going to be our visual key. That could be a sniffer, it could be a guard, it depends on who you're playing that week. We change our reads from week to week based on the team we're playing, but the bottom line is they're going to have something that they're looking at that tells them how to fit their runs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my linebackers right in between about four or five yards off the two-man sled, and I'm going to have a player behind that that they're visual keying. They're going to take their run steps first, all right, towards the line of scrimmage, so we're going to take our short run steps first, and then I'm going to send that visual key in a direction. Whatever direction I send that visual key in, the linebacker is going to attack and press that two-man sled on that side so that we now understand how to read a key, what gap we're going to play, and now that we're going to play that gap, let's get our hands, elbows in, thumbs up, striking, the two-man sled so that we understand as a linebacker, I don't know what gaps I'm going to fit yet. I'm going to, I'm going to fit open windows and I'm going to scrape closed doors, but I got to get a key. If that happens to be a sniffer or a guard and I get movement this way or pull this way, well then my gap goes here. I take on that two-man sled on that side. If my key goes this way, all right, now after I recognize and take my steps, my key goes this way, I'm going to take on, all right, the two-man sled on that side. So now I got to move them. I got them looking at a key. All right, I got him reading what a key is, and then I got him striking a two-man sled with some movement, all right, so that we can now get downhill and strike just like we would have to, all right, hat in hands and button press off of blocks that we're going to see in a the game. Then I can also incorporate off of that, I can incorporate some type of disengage movement into some type of tackling drill to add to it for the linebackers to where I can read a key, strike the two-man sled, disengage the two-man sled and get into some version of, of, a, of a hawk tackle or gator roll tackle. You can combine several different drills into one, but I'm going to be focused on my linebackers reading their eyes where they belong, seeing which way it goes, attacking that side of the two-man sled. Now we got to button press and strike that two-man sled, and then we got to disengage from there. All right, so that's how I'm going to get my LBs in, involved. All right, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my safeties, okay, and I'm going to put my safeties up. And this is more of my down safeties that are the outside linebackers. I'm going to put them up, and I'm going to put two receivers outside and a third receiver, all right, in the backfield. I'm going to have my safeties attack the two-man sled, punch it in and up, and then when they disengage, they're going to take their palms drop for us, which is inside of two, two doesn't cross my face, three doesn't out leverage me. And I'm going to have this three that's in the backfield, I'm going to have him either stay tight or I'm going to have him release wide. If they, when they disengage off the two-man sled and they drop palms and we're aiming one yard inside, one yard under this number two receiver. If this guy stays tight, I want to see that they get one yard inside and one yard under that number two receiver and they understand that if three is tight, we're going to be a little bit tighter with our drop and I'm going to get them to get to this point and square up and see what's going on with the quarterback. If they get off that two-man sled and into their palms drop and now this three is working wide, I'm going to get them to push with to that number three because in that coverage that's our responsibility. All right, so when we're playing that palms coverage, two doesn't cross my face, three doesn't out leverage me. 
I strike that sled, I get into my palms drop, three's going wide, I gotta make that push call and alert. I would have a Mike linebacker, obviously not in this drill, but in the coverage, you'd have a Mike linebacker behind you that would also be pushing to the new number three, which is the original number two after the routes disperse. All right, so we're gonna strike here, we're gonna get into our palms drop, and we're gonna read a tight three or a wide three, and that's the drill that I'm gonna do with my safeties, okay? And then I'm gonna take my corners and probably my free safety, and I'm gonna put them on the sled, same way I just had my others, my other safeties. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna strike that two-man sled. We're gonna get it to go in and up, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, all right, some version of an open field roll tackle. All right, so whether you want to call it a hawk tackle, rugby tackle, gator roll, whatever you want to call it, we're struggling a little bit with tackling in the open field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a player or a coach standing, all right, with a stand-up bag that they can hold the top of the bag just like this. So I would hold the stand-up bag just like that, all right? We don't, have, um, we don't have enough of the balls or the tubes to roll out. We don't have the fancy shadow mans that, that run down the field. So we got to do it the old-fashioned way. You put a coach or a player on one side, all right, and then you put a stand-up bag that you hold. So if this eraser was the bag, I would hold it up just like that. We're going to strike this sled, we're going to disengage, and we're going to run. And then when we get here, we're going to work on, all right, when we get closer to the ball, we're going to work on that breakdown, that swoop, that shimmy technique. And we're going to go near foot, near shoulder with our head behind, trying to take the head out of the tackling phase, all right, and all the things that they're teaching with the new the nuances of tackling. Rather put your head, rather than put your head across the bow and get it and your neck and your head in that position, a lot of things now is head behind. So if I'm running to my left, it's going to be my left foot and my left shoulder or near foot, near shoulder. My head's going to be behind, and now I am going to I am going to roll tackle. So I'm going to explode through the eyes through the thigh. I'm going to explode through this bag, and then I'm going to roll back towards myself. All right. So if my left foot and my left shoulder was the near foot, near shoulder. When I got to that bag, my head would be behind. I would explode, eyes on the thigh, through that bag. I would wrap, and I would roll towards myself. So I would shoot eye through the thigh, all right, explode through this bag with my head behind it, left foot, left shoulder. I would wrap, and I would roll back towards myself, all right, so that we incorporate the gator roll tackle into there, okay? So that's how, when we get back to practice tomorrow, all right, don't know if I can get them all done in one day or if we got to do them in different periods, but I'm going to I'm going to explain to my coaches at each position, these are some of the drills I want you to use with the two-man sled, and I want everybody to understand, okay, that we have to learn how to strike, we have to learn how to play with our hands, we have to learn how to play with a good pad level, which ultimately equals leverage when we're taking things on or we're blocking people, right? So when people ask why you're doing those things, here's why we're doing them. We don't strike people enough at every position. We don't strike with our hands, all right? We don't play violently enough. We don't play with a good pad level. We don't play with good leverage underneath people and striking on the rise, all right? You always talk about tackle on the rise and hit on the rise. We don't do that. We play with a poor pad level. So we're going to get all of our coaches and our players to understand this is why we're doing these drills and this is why we're doing them on that left slip. We're going to learn to play with our hands, all right? We're going to learn to, uh, we're going to, learn to play and shoot our hands. We're going to learn to play violently with our hands. We're going to learn to get people off us. We're going to learn to block people. We're going to learn to finish blocks, okay? And we're going to keep working on those things over and over because regardless of what scheme you run on offense or defense, those are all things that are going to show up, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of our stuff in the weight room, and I'm going to put a heavy concentration on a lot of close grip bench, okay? And I'm going to get our kids to understand that they're going to bench press with the bar about shoulder width apart here because that's where we are going to take things on with our elbows in and our thumbs up. So I don't want those hands out any wider than that. I want them in because the close grip bench probably replicates football play more than a regular or a wide grip bench. I'm not doing it to get a better bench press. That's for weightlifting season. That's for another time. I want a close grip bench so our kids understand how to bench things off of us from the position that we need to play football in. So I'm going to try and get some things in the weight room to replicate what we need on the field. All right, so again, these are all things that I think all good coaches are doing. I don't think there's anything new to it, all right? Uh, obviously, there's nothing schematically to it. This is just our version and my version of saying, what do we do poorly? Where are we struggling? I've had some time to look at film and analyze some things and watch us play. So now we are going to get back to getting, understanding our kids that we got to strike with our hands. We got to be violent. We got to have great pad level. We got to play with leverage. 
And the biggest thing that I told the coaching staff, we have to instill the mindset in our players to be a physical football team. Run through blocks, not around them. We will run the football. We will be physical at the point of attack. Our running backs will block. Our receivers will block. We will be good on special teams. All right? And what that comes down to is getting, like I said in the last video, maybe getting a little bit more away from schematics of things and, and getting away from all the fancy X's and O's that you can do and getting back into the mindset of what good football teams do. Good football teams block. Good football teams tackle. Good football teams are physical. I don't care if you're spread, option, wishbone, pro eye, every good offensive team blocks and they run the football with a mindset and they try to run the football downhill. Okay, every good defensive team strikes, gets people off of them, all right, and they play downhill at or behind the line of scrimmage, and that's how you play good defensive football. Every good special teams has kids that run down the field and strike, and they don't run around blocks, and if it's kickoff, they learn through the speed zone to avoid, and then when it's an eight or less or ten or less button press, now they learn how to go through blocks and get people off of them. So we're going to instill that mindset back in our guys all right, that it's a physical mindset, we need to strike, we need to play with our hands. Because at the end of the day, control the controllables. We control our work ethic, we control whether or not we're getting better with our work ethic and the output and the competitive effort that we're putting on the field. Okay, if that's not enough to win games right now, then so be it. But the bottom line is those are the things we can control, and we're going to work on controlling them over and over again. For everybody else that was in, in Florida, all right, hopefully uh, your, your, your homes and your families and everything else is okay. Hopefully you can get back to a little bit of normalcy this week and play some football. Hopefully the season goes well for the rest of you. I'll see you next time uh, with, with whatever our next video may be, whenever I get some free time to do another one. As always, remember, you won't play well until you play fast, guys. Stay safe. See you next time.